Hey guys, Jared here, Got Hammer 227 Wanted to come on today and tell you about my nerdgasm that I've had all day today. It was just amazing. Mm. Out of my Thomas Mitchell Church Warden, which I don't smoke on here all that much. Cult Abacus. Thank you, Big Al. So, two things that I got today that are nerdtastic, nerdtacular. They're just plain nerdy. So, let me show you the first thing I got. Boom. D&D starter set. Um, getting the starter set because I haven't played this game since I was a kid. Um, it came with, you know, like a small kind of an adventure guide type thing. The die, which are rolling around in there. And, um, another book for like the kind of the rules the general rules I haven't played it since I was in maybe sixth grade <clears throat> and I'd love to get back into it but it's been so long and I have to you know redo the rules and all that and I'm trying to get the uh, player's manual which has all the like races and classes the monster manual which has all the creatures and the um Dungeon Master's Guide, which, I mean, that one kind of suffices as a, a Dungeon Master's Guide. But I need something a little more in-depth. Um, but me and a buddy of mine have been wanting to play it for a long time. We just haven't gotten around to getting it. Um, he loves the story. He loves storytelling. I love storytelling. And we both really like role-playing games and tabletop games. And um, we actually invested in another tabletop kind of a card game. We played Magic the Gathering and all that. We, we still play Magic the Gathering. Um, but it was called, um, what was it, Space Hulk. It was a um, Warhammer 40K, Warhammer 40,000, however you want to say it, uh, tabletop card game, which was like your squad of term uh, Terminator Space Marines of the Blood Ravens are um, stuck on a spaceship and you are fighting the gene stealers and it's all card based like everything's card based and you have to fight through the rooms and it's so unforgiving because your characters die and then you don't have that specific power like one guy has a flamer one guy has a heavy turret and once they're dead they're dead and that game is actually I believe out of print they don't print that one anymore and that was one of the first tabletop games that inspired the entire Warhammer 40k universe. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, I played the first and second edition. That was the style that my buddy and his dad uh, used to play, and uh, that's the style that I started playing. And this one is like I don't I don't know what generation they're. I think they're in the fifth generation. I don't remember. So, the next nerdy thing that I got is something very dear to me and I just got it an hour and a half ago <laughs> so let me unveil this for you but first let me give you a bit of background guess who this is one of the leading voices in science advocacy one of the leading voices in Darwinian evolution and one of the leading bi uh, evolutionary biological professors in the world today. He's outspoken. He's been called Darwin's pit or Darwin's Rottweiler. Can you guess? Without Googling, can you guess? Richard Dawkins. An appetite for wonder. But there's something special about this particular version. First edition signed by Richard Dawkins himself. That is his signature right there. Right there. That is Richard Dawkins' signature. I own the signature of Richard Dawkins. Now that might not be a huge thing since he's still alive and he still does book signings. But he is one of the big influences in my life next to Carl Sagan at the top, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Stephen Hawking, Richard Dawkins. So he's up there. 
Now, the only thing that can make my book collection more complete for me personally is if I had Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Carl Sagan, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Stephen Hawking, although I don't know how he signs his name anymore. I don't think he would. No hand motion. Um, but anyways, no, those four, if I had their signatures, plus, you know, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and, well, I already got Richard Dawkins, and uh, Stephen Hawking. Those signatures would make my book collection. I mean, it would absolutely, oh my god. I, I would kill for those signatures. Um, but I've got Richard Dawkins' signature on his memoir about himself. Basically, it's just about his life and how he got into um, science. And he actually just released another kind of a biogra uh, biographical, bio the kind of a biography of um, his career in science. I've seen that one around at the library and I haven't had the chance to read it yet because I'm reading the two things actually I'm reading a Space Wolf omnibus which is like three stories in one giant book which is a Warhammer 40,000 um, Space Marines chapter and I'm also reading uh, God is Not Great How Religion Poisons Everything by Christopher Hitchens now just because Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens are the two things I'm going on about does not mean I don't read religion. I've read the Bible five times, four different versions. So, I've definitely read Christian theology. I've read the Quran. Well, I should say I've read most of the Quran. Um, there are a couple parts where I just kind of skimmed through, more or less. Um, and then I've read the Torah or the, you know, the, oh, what's the other word for it? I forget, but it's basically the Jewish version of the Bible. So I've read theology. Um, I've read mythology, uh, you know, the, um, Greek, the Roman, the, uh, ancient Egyptian, even the Scottish, you know, the legends of Dagda, um, the Middle Eastern uh, with uh, the story of Marduk and um, the city of Uruk and um, Gilgamesh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, things like that. So I've read all sorts of mythology. So that's I, when I do criticize religion in any way, it's not because I don't know the religion or it doesn't make sense to me. I understand the religions of you know Christianity Islam Islam is probably the fuzziest for me because of course you have the people that say it's a religion of peace but then again Christianity is also supposed to be a religion of peace and there's a lot of things in the Bible that are not peaceful like if say Joe over here has a friend named Bob, and Bob says, hey, why don't you come with me to the synagogue and not to church, you know, then by the laws of the Bible, Joe has to be the first one to throw a stone at Bob to kill him. That's straight out of the book, that's right out of the Bible, that if a man tries to uh, convince you to worship other gods, your hand has to be the one to strike first in stoning him to death. So, there are some things that are not very peaceful, and of course, many people will overlook that, which is why I tend to go away from uh, religious things like that. I don't, I don't follow that kind of thing. Um, that's not to say that religion is bad. It's not necessarily all bad. Um, it brings a lot of comfort and a lot of uh, fellowship for a lot of people. And that's a great thing. And I highly respect that. But it is kind of hypocritical to say that this religion is true, but then to not follow certain aspects of it when it's quite clearly spelled out what you should do if any friend of yours says, hey, instead of going to church, why don't you come and see what you know a mosque is like? And I mean, even homosexuality. I mean, I mean if... 
if you don't believe or if you don't believe that homosexuality is you know, if you think it's a choice or you think you know it's a sin because of your religious beliefs that you know that's your thing um, but you know stoning them to death isn't that a little extreme um, I think it's extreme and of course we would not do that today because society evolves and um, it's outrageous to think that as society evolves religion and the rules governing people should not evolve with it just because God didn't you know update the Bible or we haven't received the updated Bible doesn't mean that you know the God of the old world still believes that all this shit is you know needs to have everyone stoned so that's where I go away from religion and that's where I fell into science I went from philosophy studying religions things like that uh, to studying scientific philosophy to studying science and that's where you know my life completely changed forever was when I started getting into evolution cosmology uh, understanding the Big Bang understanding the Higgs boson which is I still don't completely understand the Higgs boson but then again not many people do either um, and we don't have that much information on it uh, and we don't fully understand it by the way the Higgs boson is the God particle the particle that for some odd reason can create mass which as far as I know we're it's just drawing it out of another existent another universe but that's an entirely different subject so I'm ranting now I apologize I just wanted to say that yes I've got the D&D starter kit which is sitting here on the floor next to me and I've got Richard Dawkins signature on a first edition of his memoir and I'm super stoked that I got that because it was on sale like 20% off so it was a nerdgasmic day and also I've been doing a lot of writing I've been writing a or there's a short story that I wrote a long time ago that I'm trying to convert into something longer maybe a novella or a novel hopefully a novel that would be like the master plan um, but we will see where that leads to give you a little bit of like what I've been writing and of course I'm not gonna like go into the whole thing just because then uh, I don't know I just don't like going into all of the details about what I'm writing it's the story of a um, a veteran of a war that takes place maybe 40 years in the future um, he's like a mercenary he gets hired by these rogue agent or rogue members of the UN to take down a drug cartel out of Madagascar that creates this super drug after um, the Olympics in 2032 that basically makes you a miniature version of the Hulk but not green so and I explain it with a lot of different scientific things um, for instance causes your adrenaline all of your adrenaline bursts out of your adrenal glands at once uh, because your blood your heart beats so fast that it's more like a humming so your body temperature goes way way up near boiling because your blood's going through your system that fast um, so the friction of your blood in your system causes your body to think that it's in pain and on fire so all of your adrenaline rushes out to try and stop that um, that reaction and so that is uh, kind of the scientific portion of it and of course it's science fiction it is not science fact I'm not an anatomist or a you know I'm not like a chemist or anything although I could probably ask my old chemistry teacher a few things about how these drugs would react in the body that would be interesting I'm actually going to lunch with him on Friday that'll be fun it's always fun um, so yeah that's some things that I've been doing the nerdgasm of the day um, my writing all that just wanted to come on and let you guys know about these awesome things I'm looking forward to playing d and looking forward to staring at this signature for a long long time looking forward to making gains in the gym tomorrow um, it's it's just gonna it's it's gonna be good I'm positive I'm being a positive person so I'm gonna finish the rest of this I'm going to enjoy the rest of my evening, and I hope you guys do the same. So, till next time, like, subscribe. I'll see you all later.